Hello, and welcome to Music Corner Storytime. My name is Serafina Collart, and I am a classically trained soprano and mother of two preschool age children. I am excited to share with you today this beautiful story called Gabriella's Song, which is about the power of music. In the background, you will hear my friend Alina Voiku playing the piano while I sing a Neapolitan Italian song called the Cardillo, which means the goldfinch. Are you ready to listen? Gabriella's Song by Candace Fleming, illustrated by Giselle Potter. Ah, Venice, the city of Piazza San Marco, the Grand Canal, St. Mark's Cathedral. But to Gabriella Menza, Venice was something more. Venice was the city of music. Did you know that Venice is where the art form of opera was born? It was. Back in 1607, Venetians built themselves the first opera house in Europe. Have you ever been to an opera performance? They are wonderful. It is the perfect combination of story and song and has been loved for a very long time. Now, let's return to our story. Look, there's Gabriella right there. Let's see where she is going. On her way home from the marketplace, Gabriella heard the morning melody of the street traders singing their wares. Fresh, fresh fish, hot pie, hot. Buy my sweet, sweet cream. She heard the rhythm of the tethered boats thumping against the canal walls. Bump da bump bump, bump da bump bump. And echoing in harmony down the paved alleyways and between the high buildings, she heard the slap slap of drying laundry, the flap flap of pigeon wings, the jing-a-ling-a-ling of lyre, and the ting-a-ling-a-ling -a -ling of church bells. Then, way in the distance, rising sweet and clear, Gabriella heard her mother's call. Gabriella, Gabriella, more mio, come home. Her mother's voice mingled with the city sounds. And within Gabriella's heart, they blended and blurred and became a song. Humming the song that sprang to her lips, Gabriella skipped down the lane toward home. As she passed Aliani's bakery, she decided to stop for a morning pastry. One cannoli, please, Signor Pagliani, Gabriella told the baker. While she waited, she hummed her song. What is that you're singing? asked Pagliani. Just a little tune, replied Gabriella. She hummed louder so he could hear. The baker whistled a few bars to himself. Why, that's good, he declared. It makes my heart light and my feet feel like dancing. I like it too, agreed Gabriella. She handed Pagliani a coin, took her cannoli, and, still humming, skipped out the door. Mmm, don't those cannolis look scrumptious? A cannoli is an Italian pastry that's filled with a sweet, creamy filling and topped with chocolate chips. They are delicious. Gabriella's song stayed behind. The baker whistled it while kneading dough. He whistled it while filling pastries. He whistled it while waiting on the widow Sanducci. Ah, oh, sighed the widow, such a sad song. It makes me long for my younger, happier days. Really, replied Pagliani, it makes me feel younger and happier. The widow blew her nose. Songs mean different things to different people. If it makes you happy, then whistle away, Signor, whistle away. Picking up her shopping basket, the widow Sanducci left the bakery with four loaves of bread and Gabriella's song. As she climbed into a gondola, the widow began to hum. Do you know what a gondola is? It is a special black boat that they use in Venice to get around 
because Venice is built on more than a hundred islands and its streets are mostly canals, which are bodies of water, kind of like rivers. So instead of seeing lots of cars, like we use here in the United States to drive around, people use boats or gondolas to sail through the city. Now that you know what a gondola is, let us return to the widow Santucci, who just climbed into a gondola and began humming Gabriella's song. That's a catchy tune, cried Luigi the gondolier. What is it? I do not know, replied the widow. I heard it from the baker. It's so sad, no? No, exclaimed the gondolier. That's not a sad song. That's a love song. Listen. He clutched his accordion to his heart and played Gabriella's song. Now the music wafted and weaved on the breeze. It alighted on the ears of the other gondoliers gliding through the waterways who snatched up their accordions and joined in. It wound its way down the streets where housewives heard it and hummed. Dock workers listened, then whistled. School children sang aloud. Gabriella's song reverberated throughout all of Venice. But one man did not hear it, the brilliant composer Giuseppe del Pietro. Instead, he sat at his piano, staring at the black and white keys. In just a few weeks, the composer was expected to perform his newest symphony in the Piazza San Marco. But after months of hard work, he still could not create the simplest tune. For the first time in his career, Giuseppe del Pietro could not find the music. Frustrated, Giuseppe pushed away from his piano and walked to the window. He opened it wide. Like a miracle, the music found him. Rising to greet him from below came the sweetest tune he had ever heard. The composer leaned out his window and looked down. There, at the doorway of his very own building, Gabriella's mother was saying, Sing it again, mio amore. I want to remember it always. So Gabriella sang. Her mother smiled. She swayed, eyes shut. Above them, Giuseppe shut his eyes too and gave himself up to the music. In the notes, he heard the slap slap of drying laundry and the flap flap of pigeon wings. He heard the jingling a ling of lira and the ting a ling a ling of church bells. And above it all, he heard the clear, sweet call of. Mio amore, mio amore. That's it, Giuseppe cried. Snatching the song from the air, he dashed to his piano and scribbled furiously in his notebook. Then he played back what he had written. Bellissima, he exclaimed, but it is not finished. It needs more. Day and night, the composer worked. He added an opening movement, a scherzo, and a grand finale. He turned Gabriella's song into a symphony. Weeks later, music lovers from all over Venice filled the Piazza San Marco to hear Dal Pietro's newest work. Luigi and his fellow gondoliers were there. So were the widow Santucci and Pagliani the baker. And Gabriella, sitting beside her mother, was there. A hush fell over the audience as the composer raised his baton. He gave the downbeat. Instantly, the orchestra burst into life. The music soared and swirled. It climbed, it curled. It grew higher and higher and higher still until strings, woodwinds, and percussion met in a heart-stopping crescendo. The audience shivered from the music's beauty. In the familiar tune, they heard laundry and pigeons, Lyra and church bells. They heard happiness and sadness and love. The audience knew that this was by far Del Pietro's greatest symphony. The music faded. 
the audience sprang to its feet. Bravo, they applauded. Bravissimo. Giuseppe del Pietro turned to face the admiring crowd. Grazie, he said, bowing. But I alone cannot take credit for this music. Weeks ago, I was inspired by a simple song I heard outside my window. To whoever was singing, I now say, grazie. In the audience, the gondoliers turned toward Luigi. Luigi turned toward the widow Santucci. The widow turned toward Pagliani, the baker. The baker turned toward Gabriella. And Gabriella turned toward her mother. Wide smiles spread across their faces. Take a bow, mio amore, her mother urged. Take a bow. The end. In our story today, Gabriella uses the sound she hears in everyday life, like the thumping of the boats, the cathedral bells ringing, the sound of the laundry slapping, to create her song, which inspires so many. Have you ever taken the sounds you hear in everyday life and made little songs within? My son does that quite often using fire truck sirens as the basis for his songs. There are famous composers who do similar things. Mahler, for instance, uses bird calls in many of his songs. Another example of this is in the French song by Gabriel Faure called Les Berceaux, which means the cradles. In this song, Faure sets a poem which is about ships rocking on the water and cradles being rocked by people. He depicts the ships on the water in the piano line by arpeggios that rock back and forth. I have a recording of it that I would like to share with you that I have sung and my friend Alina Voiku is playing the piano on. I hope you enjoy. Mm -hmm. 